Welcome to Be Still My Soul. Today, my beautiful sisters, Alva Valad, Marky Avila, and myself, Pauline Romero, will be walking through with you with Job chapter 8. It's a tough book we're doing, brothers and sisters, and it's not easy with all the messages that we're getting, but we we're grateful to be able to look at this book and really begin to understand the meaning of suffering. That's right. And that we can have joy in suffering, although it sounds crazy, right? We'll find out more about that very soon. But we invite you now, our viewers and our listeners, to join us for our opening prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Without you, we are nothing. We thank you, dear Lord, for giving us the fear of the Lord. That means just to be reverent, to hold you in awe, to adore you. We say, come, let us adore you. And today we adore you. We sit with hopeful expectation, knowing that you are with us and you will send us that revelation that we need right now. We call upon you, Lord, to send the Holy Spirit to be with us. Give us the words, the message, the reflection that you want us to share today. Come, Holy Spirit, come. O oh, Holy Spirit, soul of our souls, we worship and adore you. Enlighten and guide. Strengthen and console us. Tell us what we ought to do and command us to do it. We promise to be submissive in everything you permit to happen to us. Only show us what is your will. Amen. Amen. The Unity Prayer. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Amen. The Family Prayer Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, in you we contemplate the splendor of true love. To you we turn, O trust. Holy Family of Nazareth, grant that our families too may be places of communion and prayer authentic schools of the gospel, and small domestic churches. Holy Family of Nazareth, may families never again experience violence, rejection, and division. May all who have been hurt or scandalized find ready comfort and healing. Holy Family of Nazareth, make us once more mindful of the sacredness and inviolability of the family and its beauty in God's plan. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, graciously hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our opening prayer. We now go to Alva for Job chapter 8. Thank you. Job chapter 8, Bildad's first speech. Bildad the Shuhite spoke out and said, How long will you utter such things? The words from your mouth are like a mighty wind. Does God pervert judgment and does the Almighty distort justice? If your children have sinned against him and he has left them in the grip of their guilt, still, if you yourself have recourse to God and make supplication to the Almighty, should you, believe, should you be blameless and upright, surely now he will awake for you and restore your rightful domain. Your former state will be of little moment, for in time to come, you will flourish indeed. If you inquire of the former generations and give heed to the experience of the fathers. For born but yesterday, we know nothing, and our days on earth are but a shadow. They will correct and teach you with words that come from the heart. Can papyrus thrive without marsh? Can reeds 
flourish without water? Even if still growing and uncut, they wither more quickly than any plant. Such is the end of those who forget God. The hope of the godless perishes. His trust is hanging by a thread. A spider's web is what he relies on. He leans on his house, but it does not stand. He clings to it, but it crumbles. He is full of sap before sunrise, and beyond his garden his shoots go forth. About a heap of stones are his roots entwined. Among the rocks he takes hold. Yet if one tears him from his place, it will disown him. I have never seen you. There he lies rotting beside the road, and out of the soil another sprouts. Behold, God will not cast away the upright, neither will he take the hand of the wicked. Once more will he fill your mouth with laughter, and your lips with rejoicing. They that hate you shall be clothed with shame, and the tent of the wicked shall be no more. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now go back and prayerfully read and reflect on Job chapter 8. We invite you to do the same. And when we return, we will share our personal reflections with you on Be Still, My Soul.
Welcome back to Be Still My Soul. We're looking at Job chapter 8, and I will dive right into it, ladies. So when I first read this, I was like, what? I had to take a real step back because I was really knocked in the stomach by verse 2. I was like, ah, huh? Bildad? Your words are long-winded blusterings. And I went to look up the word blusterings. It says, speak in a loudly arrogant or bullying manner, but full of empty threats. And I was like, man, Bildad, you are really coming off as uncompassionate. You don't have no mercy. You know, so this man that had the NI rope, he did at the last tread right now, and you are given the last punch we need. But then as I kept reading, the Holy Spirit started to reveal to me, what's really going on? Bildad is really building up back Job's hope. And the word hope comes in verse 13. So there it hit me again. It says, such is the end of those who forget God. The hope of the godless perishes. Then he goes on in verse 14. His trust is hanging by a thread. A spider's web is what he relies on. But throughout this entire chapter, when I read it and I read it and I read it, I started to see all the positive things that was actually coming out. He was not being negative. He was not being uncompassionate. He was not being merciless. He was actually giving Job some tough love. He was basically saying, okay, Job, we've been here with you for a whole week. I have kept my mouth shut this whole time. You were really lambasted by Eliphaz. We gave you the chance to rant and rave. But really, because Job comes off almost like he wants to just end his life, really. That's what's happening in chapter 7. He's saying, I just pretty much ready to give up God. But... Bildad is saying, I know that you will not give up, but I think I need to talk some really tough love to you right now. But that only comes because he was prayerful and he kept his mouth shut for a long time. And the Holy Spirit now is speaking through Bildad. He's speaking through Bildad to say, okay, Job, and I'll allow you to fulfill sorry for yourself no more right? And that really, you have to have a discerning spirit to reach that. Because when people are really in a very trying situation, right? And they feel there is no recourse. They don't have no way to turn. This is it. Maybe the bank will take my house. My husband will leave me. I have no more money. My mother is going to die, whatever it is, right? You feel now, this is it. Just let me give up at this point now. He's saying, you won't give up. I know you won't, Job. I know that you really understand that you must keep hoping and trusting in God. And the words that really stood out to me were recourse to God, Restore, righteous, verse 8. Let me go back through them one as they come. Verse 5, recourse. Verse 6, righteous and faultless. Verse 6 again, restore. And then he says, even now he will care for you. Verse 7, prosperity. Doesn't have to be financial prosperity, you know. It could be that God will restore you with a full family. Whoever you're at odds with, God will make it right, right? And sometimes out of a bad situation, God can make things right, right? And then it goes on to say, um, verse 10 was very crucial for me with words that come from the heart. Now, let me stop a minute. This is important because whatever Job has been saying has really been coming from his heart. And Bildad understands that. that sometimes people speak what they're really feeling. Feeling. And you have to allow people to say how they feel. When they're in trying situations, 
Sometimes people just want you to sit with them and let them blab off. Let them vent. release. Mm -hmm. Let them vent. Mm -hmm. We may even have to deal with some angry people and they may want to come at you in your face and scream and shout and you will have to keep your calm. Maybe it's a husband, maybe it's a wife. I mean, if you're a man, of course, we, we can't have wives, we have husbands. Maybe it's a child, maybe it's even a parent. Maybe a parent just snaps. And you have to really just stand your ground and be like that candle lit, giving off the light to help that person get back their grip on reality, right? But it's really about timing. Because if you're dealing with somebody who is about to snap and you say the wrong thing or you speak the wrong words to them, that could be what will just trigger them and carry them over the hill and let them do something that in their right minds, in a peaceful and stable situation, they would never have thought of doing. So we really need to spend time with God we need to know that every day we have to go to the Word of God. This is what is going to guide us, and it's going to lead us to the correct timing of every situation. And that's what Bill Dad realizes, and he knows. And I had a similar conversation yesterday with my dad. You know, he's like, Pauline, there are some moments in your life when you will have to just speak the truth. But it's all about timing. Because people don't really like the truth, you know, Marky and Alva. Especially if it's a truth that we don't want to face or we don't want to hear, look, man, I love you. But if you don't stop getting angry, you're going to hurt somebody or hurt yourself. Speaking about that, I heard one lady talking on the radio some years ago, and she told me, not told me, she was talking to the person on the radio, and what she said was she, got, she used to get herself in such rages that one day she just snapped in her head, her brain, her vein burst, right? And sometimes it's stressful situation that will cause these things. Sometimes it's an anger that builds up. I will rant and rave and don't know when to stop. And you can cause your own demise, right? So he's realizing now that Job is really starting to go into a pity party. And he will not tolerate that because God's children don't go into pity party. We can choose to be the victim or we can choose to be the victor. And us having one of those moments of, about a week back, and after much reflection, and this is how thick my reflection is, pages and pages, mm -hmm. I was just writing on the 29th of November, pages and pages, and the last moment I will read what I have. How can I turn my situation around from being a victim to a victor? I can be powerful, not pitiful. Resourceful, not resentful. And faithful, not fearful. So, I am a victor in Christ. And we learned recently, Mark in Revive, I'm a princess. You're a princess. Alva is a princess. Mark is a prince. Our viewers and listeners are princes and princesses in a very wealthy kingdom. We are sons and daughters of a great king. And we just need to call upon him. So whatever situation you're in, it may be a really horrible situation. Maybe you've even experienced being raped being abused by maybe your father, right? And those kind of trauma really need healing, right? 
But you can choose to remain the victim or you can choose to become victorious. It's all in the attitude. But he realized, Bildad realized that he needed to step up now and speak to Job because Job was going into a pity party. He was sinking to the lowest. And he realized that Job could have very well done something that ordinarily he wouldn't do because he was asking God to just let him die. He really wanted to die. And he said something that even triggered my concern. I know Job wasn't going to kill himself because I know the story and how it ends. But last week he said he would prefer to be strangled Right? So we have to ask God to be that vessel, that instrument of peace and light to others. Because there's a lot of people in darkness. A lot of people are struggling. We spoke about this earlier this morning. And sometimes your husband might come home and just lash out at you. You may not know what your husband is going through at work. But you may just say one thing and he trigger him and he got to 90. And you might stop shocked because you might not know why this man act like one crazy fool, man. What's wrong? But then you can choose to either answer him back like the fool or be the wise and just go into prayer. And it sounds really crazy, doesn't it? The world is teaching us to be different today as women. We're being taught that it tit for tat. You say I, I want to say hey, me. You say A, I want to say B. And for the longest time I lived like that. My husband would say up, I would say down. He would say no, I would say yes. And I didn't understand. You don't fight fire with fire. You fight fire with water. If I take this glass right now and throw it in here, that candle will out. Right? But if I come with another light, it will keep lit. More fire just adds to the fire. Right? And so, Bildad is actually telling us today, be calm, be peaceful, submit to the Lord, whoever you are. And you might say, oh, easy for you, Sadat. <laughs> you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've done. You don't know what I'm capable of. But when I speak, and when each one of us speak, it's from our personal experiences. And I can tell you, as I'm sure of every day that we have, I don't know if tomorrow will come, but I know of the day I'm living, that I have believed in that life for so long that women are capable of Everything that men are capable of and more, and yes, but we must begin to understand our feminine power. We must begin to understand the power we have of femininity, right? And to just look to God with hope when we feel we can't take the trial that we're in anymore. And whatever is happening to us, that I can't go anymore. God never gives us more than we can bear. Never, ever, ever. No matter what situation we are facing. And I, I sit here. I'm reminding myself about that. I have my own trials I'm facing. And this morning I woke and I went into a little worry party. Wanting to start a little pity party in my mind. And I said, not today. I choose to be at peace. I choose to be joyful. I choose not to worry. I choose not to be anxious. I choose to give it to the Lord. To say, Jesus, I trust in you. This is your worries. This is your cross. This is your battle. And I will not fight it without you. I give it to you. You fight it for me. Amen. And so that's where I am today. And I think that's what Bildad was hoping to achieve with Job in this chapter today. We'll be right back with more on Be Still, My Soul.
Welcome back to Be Still My Soul. We're looking at Job chapter 8, and we now go to Alba. Thank you, Pauline and Martin. Um, Pauline, you said it all. And <laughs> 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 Martin. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like you, um, verse 2, when I read it, and uh, I was like, <laughs> what a good friend Bildad is to Job, telling him, your words are empty, like the wind, <laughs> you know, they fly away. And for me, he was like scolding Job for not listening to um, Eliphaz and still trusting in God so much because of the way he, and in chap, part of chapter 7, he was still loyal to God. So I was like, he's not a good friend. <laughs> For a good friend of mine, even though he has less, has sat with me for so long, for seven days, saying nothing, and to tell me my words are empty, what kind of friend is that? You know, you want words of approval, of encouragement, not those negative things. You don't want to hear that. Especially what um, Job is going, was going through, losing his family, his wealth, his body was uh, full of sores. So he doesn't want to hear that. And when we are going through problems or we're su suffering a great loss, we don't want to hear people telling us, and, and Marky had mentioned it um, the last time in chapter 7, people asking you, how do you deal with it? How do you take it? No. We would want them to just be there. And as good friends, what we can do for our friends is to pray for them, pray with them so that they can see the light, because there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And pray for ourselves, for God to give us the wisdom that when it's time to say something or do something, we do the right thing and say the right thing to the person. Mm -hmm. To be more helpful than harmful, because we tend to be harmful. And uh, as you mentioned, when we're going, when someone tells us something and we want our way, one screams, I'll scream too. You can't come and scream at me and I'll just sit there. But in life, we get to learn and when we get closer to God, that it's not the solution. To fight against each other is not the solution. If someone comes aggressively to you, try to stay calm. It's difficult. It is very difficult. But try to, to stay calm. Because nothing will be accomplished. And I felt for Job here. <laughs> Because the way he built that came, and he's, in my opinion, he's telling him, you sinned so much, that is why you're going through this. <laughs> you're going through so much because you sinned. You lost your family, your sons. Because you sinned, you need to repent. You need to get closer to God. But Bildad needs to get closer to God too. He needs to, he did not pray, in my opinion, he did not pray before he spoke to Job. He was talking like in the old days, okay, whatever you do, you pay for it. But no, he, did, he was not 
thinking about that in my that's my uh, humble opinion of course um, job needs to repent for god stop punishing him not knowing that he's not being punished it's just trials that we go through in verse 11 i this is one of the verses that I liked. Can the papyrus grow without mire and the reed grass flourish without water? Just like plants need water, we need God. We need to trust in Him, have faith in Him in order to flourish. Because there's only one day that we can change, that we can make changes, which is today. Yesterday, we, we can't do anything. Tomorrow, like you said, we do not know if we'll be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The only day that we can do a change or do something for someone is today. And being prayerful about it. And being good friends. Sometimes we say, I wish I could turn the time back in time. But what can we do? We can't. Mm -hmm. We learn from our mistakes. Sometimes we don't. <laughs> we, we do the same mistakes over and over, but we got to be prayerful about it. And, and he alluded to that too. He said, go back to your ancestors. You know? He said, I tried to... Um, Verse nine. Mm -hmm. Verse nine. That's right. Both of yesterday and the half of the Inquire of the past generation. Former generations. Learn from their ancestors' experience. Mm -hmm. So we need, but it, sometimes we go through the same thing over and over until we literally, okay, I gotta stop. Or I gotta do this. Walk. But we can only do it by being prayerful about it, by being close to God. Mm -hmm. And of course, having good friends to be there for you. And you being a good friend, be there for your friends when they need you. It can be accomplished. When we're going through it, it's, we do not know what to do. We just say, I can't go anymore. But we can. With God on our side, we can. And that is my share. Thank okay. you, Alva. Very, very important to remember that what we share is what we have received, you know? And so we will hear next from Marky on Be Still My Soul. Welcome back to Be Still My Soul. We heard from Alva, who probably wanted to choke Bill Dad. <laughs> How dare this man be hitting on Job like this? And now we'll hear from Marky. Marky? Thank you, Pauline. Thanks, Alva. Good sharings. What good insights of what's happening. Um, for Bill Dad, um, Bill Dad kind of reminds me of a very good friend that I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that always tends to wake me up when I'm going through my little pity party, as you had mentioned. <laughs> and <laughs> but um, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying Job because it's very real what we're reading, mm -hmm. the effects of what life has to offer. And this is just life. And we just said it in Alva's sharing where he says, go back to your ancestors in verse 8. He says, if you inquire of your former generations and give heed to the experience of the fathers, 
Situations like this has been, con has been going on for years and years, and it will go continue to happen years to come, mm -hmm. where we all go through very um, rough times in life. And when we almost seem to, these rough times have taken such a toll on us that it has um, kind of disabled us. It's kind of left us in a very bad, weakened moment. And it's in times like these that sometimes we need a friend to snap us out of it. And I think this is what Bildad is doing as well. I feel that he's saying, snap out of it. Okay, enough is enough. Um, you're, it's, it's going, this is going to destroy, it is truly going to destroy you, and you're, you're, you're better than this. This is what Bildad is saying. And I'm feeling almost to the point where Bildad is a man that once listened to Job's advice to him. Because Job was a very upright, wise man. And this is not words that would have normally typically come from Job. His behavior, it's out of his character. And, um, and he's saying, okay, your words are like a mighty wind. We all agree. It's, and you know, when winds come and they blow, they just, they make a mess of everything. And it destroys stuff. And that's what Job is doing. He's beginning to actually destroy himself, his spirit. He's killing his own spirit by um, going deep. And we understand because of the suffering that he's going through. And then he's saying, okay, so if... And he continues talking, and he's, he's telling him, um, does God pervert judgment? Does the Almighty distort justice? And we know the answer to that. That God doesn't just um, abuse judgment or, 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 or is unjust to people, like tries to make things hectic and crazy for people. There's a reason behind all of this. We don't know what it is, but God is not an evil person. He's a good person. And he says, if your children have sinned against him and he has left them in the he and he has left them in the grip of their guilt. And I highlighted that. I, I don't know why I highlighted it, but I truly what felt like is this is verse four. It says, If your children have sinned against him, and he has left them in the grip of their guilt. And I highlighted that. Well, I know why I highlighted that, because a lot of times I feel that People in a whole have sinned and done wrong, mm -hmm. and they're left in the, grip, in the grips of their own guilt. They've allowed their guilt to, um, they, haven't come, they haven't come to terms with what they have done, and it has caused this kind of chaos that Job is going through. He can't see God. As I said in last week, that... Um, Job is not feeling God's. He's not feeling God's presence. He's and he's feeling completely lost. And Bildad is reminding him that yes, you're right. It's a, he says that um, man is powerless without God. Man has nothing without him in his life. And Job is beginning to lose that sense, that presence. And. Um, so I guess that's why I highlighted that, you know, people being in the grips of their own guilt, not being able to see right from wrong, always feeling attacked, abused, having come, becoming, um, have not come to terms to what is happening, have not humbled themselves. And it continues on where he says, still, if you yourself have recourse to God or you have turned to God or have hope in God, he says, and make supplication to the Almighty, which is, um, with a humble and sincere heart, ask God for forgiveness. It says, should you be blameless and upright, surely now he will awake you and restore you back to where you were again. So we know Job is a good man. So let's talk about our own selves and where we are at right now, especially during this Advent season. Where are we right now? Um, what is it that we're hanging on to? What is it that we're doing in our lives right now that we need to come to terms with? What is it that we need to turn to God and have faith and hope in Him and allow Him to, to guide us back home, to restore us back to where we need to be? Mm -hmm. And right now I'm doing an a Advent retreat, a retreat, and it's a Marian Advent retreat with 
through the eyes of Mary. And with her, we're learning to have faith and hope with her eyes mm -hmm. and what all she has gone through. And that she's journeyed in this time. And she, like Job, if you think about this, this young woman almost being under attack, having a child, being, um, being pregnant by the Holy Spirit, no father. <laughs> and then she's a, a young girl, a teenager, a young girl, a 14-year-old. Yet she still had hope and faith in God. Mm -hmm. And then to have that fear, I'm sure. Because in those days, they used to stone They would stone her. If they but yet, committed adultery. Then she has Joseph that takes over. And because only, he was going to disown her, but because he respected her, was going to do it gently and just walk away from the situation, not making a huff or puff about anything, but because, and an angel appeared to him as well, he decided to take her on as his wife and, and, and journey with her through this. And could you imagine them journeying, no home, nowhere to go to, on a donkey, pregnant, no money, no roof under your head, where am I going? No baby things. <laughs> I have nothing for my baby. You know, we prepare for our children. You know what we're going to get, diapers, wives, whatever. She has nothing but a donkey <laughs> and her husband journeying. Could you imagine the fear? The fear instilled in you during that time. But yet she still had hope in God. She still said yes. So... And then here we, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I kind of got sidetracked there. But we're coming back now to Job here. And we're seeing that he's saying here, Job, you know, truly, if, if all is well with you and you are a, a, a just man, don't worry. God will restore you. You know, he, go, he goes onwards and going to the end where he says, God will not cast away the upright, neither will he take the hand of the wicked. He says, God will fill your mouth with laughter again. He says, and your lips will rejoice. So have hope. Hold on. It will be okay. We're here with you. He says, and a, a verse that stood out for me is verse 13 as well, where it says, so is the end of everyone who forgets God. So shall the hope of the godless man perish. His confidence will go. His trust is like a spider web, it says. And he says he shall, he says he shall re rely on, upon his family, but that too will not last. It says he can cling to it, but it shall not endure. Only God will endure. Only God. And we all have, some of us have really good families. And a good family will also teach you, I, I'm very blessed that my, my family have taught me about God and to turn to Him. Because just as I might have failed my children at some point when I'm lost as Job, <laughs> or my parents have going through trials and er errors, everyone goes through them. But we all cling on to God. And that's why you have, I think, family, good prayer warriors, your church, your community, your God, so that they can help you through those trying times and snap you out of it as Bildad has done for, is trying to do for Job. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I don't feel that Bildad is necessarily telling Job that you're a sinful person or, you know, whatever. I think he's just kind of like, I won't say justifying what Eliphaz said about him. Oh, you must have done something sinful. That's why, that's why um, God is punishing you. I think he's just saying that whatever it is, if you need to, if, if, if that be the case, sure. But God's saying that, you know, he will, he will never, um, should you be blameless and upright, surely he will awake you and restore you. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if all is well done, don't worry. It will all be well. 
So um, I think what we're seeing here at the end of the day is, and the main emphasis that Bildad makes here for me is that um, within time, in God's time, things will be well. All will be well. You just don't lose your hope and your faith in God, and he will see you through it. And I've had many a days where I've actually have to tell myself when I'm going through very trying times and you hit the nail on the head, Pauline, when you said, when you feel like it's the end of the world, there is no other way out. There is no other solution. This is the end. It is never the end with God. Never the end. Until he says it. That's right. So... And many a times I'd have to really tell myself, I just need to get through today with God. I need to have God take me through this horrific day. And he will see me through it. As you said, I surrender it all to you, God. Take it on because I can't. Mm -hmm. And to be bold enough to say that, I cannot do this, God. This is yours. I cannot handle it. Take my problem. Hold me. Embrace me and carry me through this trying time. I cannot do it alone. And this is, I feel, one of the main messages that Bildad is trying to get through to, to, to um, Job. And um, you know, as you said, Job said he'd rather die. He wants to die. And the sad part about that is we all know that if Job kills himself, <laughs> he won't be with his God. Mm -hmm. And Job doesn't want that e either. So um, it's, a, it's a very nice reminder to not lose hope, to not lose faith. And we turn to our God. We turn to our Blessed Mother. We learn from her, allow her to teach us to have faith, hope, journey as she did, in complete confidence in her God. And look where she is today, in heaven, with a crown, with a crown on her head. So thanks be to God. Amen. And that's my sharing. How beautiful, all thank the sharings. You. Thank you. I wanted to quickly just elaborate a little bit. Um, Mark, you, you really give a powerful share in verse 4, right? Where it says, if your children did him wrong, he has made them pay for their sins. There's a lot of people who are in darkness, and it takes me to what you shared last week, Alva, when you ask, are we slaves? We can be slaves. We can become slaves of sin. Mm -hmm. And stay in that sinfulness. There's a lot of people walking around right now with anger and resentment. And as, as you were speaking, Marky, I, I was smiling to myself because recently, uh, you know these WhatsApp videos that come out all the time, this man jumps out of his vehicle and he's railing up in some foreign language and he grabs a stick out of the back of his vehicle, right? And he's coming at the next man and the next man jumps out of his vehicle with a machine gun. And he started to pretend he's blind with the stick. <laughs> and that just cracked me up because he was white to play the fool then that he's blind, right? But the reality is that when you the go off, you don't know how much when a person could go off on you, right? So check yourself. Check your anger. And when these things are coming out of you, resentfulness, anger, jealousy, envy, it's because you're still in darkness. Mm -hmm. You're still in sin. You know, and you got to check yourself, really. And these things can just come at us on a daily basis, you know, even if you don't want it. So you, I find myself have to constantly be saying, for a minute, stop and talk to myself. We won't go there. I won't go into that. I won't give in to that. I won't deal with that. I won't believe that. And that's how we become victorious over our situation. We are in a spiritual battle, and we have to remember that we are going to be on a constant attack all day, right? Nobody's throwing an empty mango tree, 
Then go stone the mango tree, we're full of mango. So Satan will come at you when you are trying to give God all the glory. He's not going to come at you when he don't got you, hook, line, and sinker, right? He'll come at you when you're really trying to change or you have changed, right? And you're being a light to others. So yeah, come at you with these temptations. Yeah, come at you with these trials, right? And God allows it for a reason because we have free will to choose which path we will take, right? right. As Robert Frost said, there are two roads. Which one will you choose? The one less traveled or the one where everybody go down? And then one other thing that I really wanted to point out that Marky was speaking on, on verses 21 and 22. Bildad did give Job hope, right? He gave him hope in the last, in the entire chapter, but mostly in the last two verses, when he reminded him that, look, if you blameless, God will rise you up. He will prosper you again. You will laugh again, right? Your lips will have joyful shouts again. Your enemies will be confused and the wicked tent will disappear, right? And that's important. For us, whatever comes out of our mouth will take place. So we have to decree and declare positivity over our lives. And again, that's a next way of turning around your situation where you may be a victim of bad circumstances to become victorious. It's all about our attitude and how we handle the situation. And I had to tell you ladies, every day I get my challenges. I deal with so many people, right? And it's, it's my gift. It's just who I am. All of us are different. But I get to deal with so many people every day and so many issues, right? And you can choose how you handle things that come at you. Somebody might be angry at you for something that you can't control. Do I spit back in them? Do I give them spittle? Right? That's ugly. Or do I calm them down with my sweet words? Right? So whatever we decree and declare over our lives will come to pass. So we need to be positive and declare positive things over our lives. Even if it looks so dark you can't see one speck of light but you need to declare that there will be light that good times will come someday but you'll come and lord meanwhile give me the strength to bear and that's what Bildad did today right so we thank you for allowing us to share with you today for being here with us and we invite you to join us next week on be still my soul. For now, we say goodbye and we ask you to join us for our closing prayer. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares, and snares of, of the devil. devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits. spirits who wander throughout the world seeking the ruins of souls. Amen.